1984 here with the first official question. Did Skynet crash that boat? Talks amongst yourselves. Quite tragic. I mean, there's also been quite a lot. As of 22 hours ago, I don't know. It's saying six presumed dead by AP News. ABC News just put something out a couple hours ago. I guess we'll go, okay, Sarah Catherine. Okay, everybody's on board. Let's do it. Baltimore Bridge Collapse Timeline Inside the Cargo Ship Collision. This is from ABC News. The whole bridge just fell down. A law enforcement officer radio dispatch. So this article by Bill Hutchinson, March 27, 2024. Just after midnight on Tuesday, the fully loaded container ship Dolly, okay, if we're going to be getting into the symbolism, oh man, lifted anchor and prepared to depart the port of Baltimore with 23 crew members aboard, destined for Sri Lanka, nearly 9,000 miles away. Well, at least it wasn't going somewhere 666 miles away. That's a plus. There was no apparent indication of the catastrophe awaiting the vessel. Authorities said the bridge was undergoing maintenance at the time and that one lane in each direction remained open. Well, that's good. Now, I'm assuming that's what prevented mass casualties. Here's how the incident unfolded. 1 a.m., the 984-foot-long Singapore-flagged cargo ship pulls out of its berth at Dundalk Marine Terminal southeast of downtown Baltimore and begins to head up the Patapsco River toward the Francis Scott Key Bridge, according to the vessel's tracking data. There's actually a satellite image of this entire event, which is kind of weird. I'm going to put it on the screen in a second. Hope we don't get shut down for this. What, what's kind of weird about it is that it seems incredibly high quality, incredibly well lit. Uh, I will put it up on the screen in a second. So, who believes this is a real satellite image? I guess we'll start with that. Who believes this is a legitimate satellite image? I mean, wow. You could see cable lines. You could see debris. I mean, the level of detail here. I mean, if they have this level of detail over almost every inch of the earth, why aren't, there, why aren't they not solving all these cases? Missing persons. I mean, they could literally solve just about every single true crime case ever if they have every single or almost every single inch monitored. Yeah, Merman 84 said aerial footage, not sure about satellite. So, I mean, well, what are we alleging? So it's a saddle or is it a plane that just happened to be flying by? Or are there just mi literally millions of drones? Drones aren't that expensive for governments with trillion-dollar budgets. So with trillions of dollars in black budget, is it possible there are stealth drones, like literally millions of them? just always up in the air taking high-resolution photos and videos. Because it's, you know, it's not like they're that, ex a single drone might not be that expensive. So with a, tr with a trillion-dollar black budget, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Use your illusion says legitimate no way. I mean, it could be a drone. It could be a drone. Yeah, it's hard to believe. I, I'm not going to appeal to incredulity here. I'm not saying it's false. It's hard to believe that this level of detail can be achieved at night. But I don't know. I mean, according to the Echelon spy satellite system, which I went over that, which episode? I think I might have went over that on the Delphi series when we were talking about satellite images as pertaining to the Delphi case. So, yeah, I mean, it's tough. Let me finish the, uh, the article here. 1.23 a.m., a live stream camera captures the massive ship coming into view as it approaches the key bridge, apparently on course to pass under the 1.6-mile-long span near the middle of the bridge's cantilevered section. 
The footage shows light traffic on the bridge, including a tractor trailer rig. Why was this called the mass casualty event? Not that, you know, six casualties is not a lot, but... Okay, hold on a second. What is... What qualifies as mass casualty event? Is an incident resulting in the fatality of not fewer than three individuals. That doesn't seem mad. Does anybody find an issue with this nomenclature? Why would it be called mass? Like mass death? Like when people talk about mass death, they're not talking about four people. I mean, obviously one is a tragedy, but mass death, a mass casualty event, as per legal definition according to Cornell University, an incident resulting in the fatalities of not fewer than three individuals at one or more locations. So this was reported as a mass casualty event. So is this another like loose trap? Are we going to get into loose? Does that seem par for the course for Mind Shock? So 1 124 a.m. The live stream camera shows the cargo ship's lights suddenly going off and coming back on. You know what's weird, too? The coincidence theorists maintain this had to have been an accident. You know what's funny? Just the level of hypocrisy and projection. Because coincidence theorists, the authority worshipping cultists, the Dunning-Kruger bootlicker crowd, they immediately have to pretend and hallucinate that it had to have been accidental. Like... And they chastise the conspiracy theorists for simply questioning an event, an unusual event. This doesn't happen every day. This is an unusual event. So the goofery of coincidence theorists, quite hypocritical, as without, like, we don't even have full reports and investigations yet, and the coincidence theorists are already getting triggered and pretending it couldn't have been anything other than an act. It's kind of weird. I mean, not just for this event, for every event. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of weird. Again, I mean, I, this is mine, Chuck. I don't claim anything is true or untrue. I mean, even if we have the investigative report, it doesn't mean it's legitimate or accurate. I mean, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But, yeah, just the goofery of coincidence theorists never ceases to amaze. So, obviously, if it was intentional, I mean, it wouldn't be difficult whether you know, rogue forces within the government orchestrated this, or a foreign government, or some kind of foreign entity, if they have even basic technology at this point to, you know, a micro EMP or to hack an electrical system, I mean, to think that that's out of the question in 2024, I mean, that's just weird. I mean, what kind of goofery is that to hallucinate that it's out of the question? Now, I'm not alleging that that's what happened. But to hallucinate that it's an impossibility, that's kind of weird. That's just kind of weird. Yeah, I'm going to get into that, Miranda, what, uh, what the crew members said and what it was carrying. I'm just going to finish the initial report here. The, uh, 126 a.m., the dolly appears to lose its lights again as it drifts slightly to the right in the direction of one of the bridge's main center columns supporting the arched steel trestles of the span. That's kind of coincidental. So it's not going to hit the support. Then the power goes off and on, and then all of a sudden it's veering towards the support. Again, maybe it is a freak accident. I'm not saying it's not. But, but to hallucinate that there's not a coincidence and anomaly stack being built here. I mean, that's kind of weird. I don't really want to show the video just in case, like, I don't want to, I never show any videos of any kind of casualties. Uh, this is supposedly high altitude satellite right at the initial impact. Uh, unknown if there were casualties at that point. There's a video from right on the bridge. It appears that during the impact, I don't know if there were any cars right in the area of the impact. Okay, so the doll. So at one twenty six a.m., the doll. Okay, so the lights lose. It loses the lights again, then drifts in the direction of the bridge's main center column, supporting the arch steel trusses of the span. 
And so here's the other thing. If this was a targeted attack, what would it look like? Would it look like this, where they cut the power and then all of a sudden steer towards the center column? Because if you want to take down the bridge, I mean, it would appear that that's what it would, ha would happen. Now, obviously, if it's a freak accident, I mean, anything can happen in a freak accident. That's what makes it a freak act. But if it wasn't a free, freak accident, what would it look like? These are the questions that coincidence theorists, authority worshipping cultists, the Dunning-Kruger crowd, they're too terrified to even ask these questions in order to compare and contrast different situations and what each type of situation could look like and logically analyze. At the time, vehicles can be seen still crossing the bridge. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said about this so this governor too oh no it was the mayor i think the mayor was the guy that looks like a teenager M maryland governor westmore said that about this time a mayday call was made from the vessel giving transportation officials just enough time to order a halt to traffic approaching both ends of the bridge likely saving lives so is this like because okay regardless of what you think happened at 9 11 did it appear that there was a concerted effort to prevent casualties, like, for example, close to 50% of the working population not showing up that day. Same thing at Columbine. You have about approximately 50% of the school missing that day. So even during orchestrated events, freak accidents are not, even orchestrated events, it seems like there's always a concerted effort to minimize casualties. I mean, that's a curiosity. That's a curiosity because you would think if it, you know, they wanted to kill as many people as possible, but I don't know. Because in all of these events, we have information pointing to very deliberate, concerted efforts being made to minimize casualties. 1.27 a.m., Maryland Transportation Unit dispatchers call local law enforcement units informing them to hold traffic at the south and north ends of the bridge, saying there's a ship approaching it that lost their steering. According to the recording of the dispatch from Broadcastify.com, the live stream camera shows the cargo ship lights suddenly going off as the vessel appears to drift to the right in the direction of one of the main center columns supporting the arch steel trusses of the span. Now, here's the other issue, and I, I, was, I was looking at this discussion on, on Reddit and Twitter, about engineers and they say they're supposed to be a backup power source especially for large vessels that can cause a lot of damage so obviously until there's a full investigative report and even then we might not really know but what happened to the backup power so here are francis scott key bridge facts it was 1.6 miles, four lanes, quite large. It was a hazardous material truck route. An estimated 11.5 million vehicles cross the bridge annually. That's 30,000 a day. Wow. Baltimore Harbor is the second largest seaport in the Mid-Atlantic. So again, if some potential targeted attack, this seems to be one of the primary targets. Bridge was undergoing maintenance, but was open to traffic. Construction started in 72, and the bridge was opened March 23rd, 77. Wow. So, not quite the anniversary, but wow. Huh. That's weird. Couple days off the anniversary. Huh. Huh. That's weird. That is weird. Named after Francis Scott Key, who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, cost $110 million to build. Vertical clearance is 185 feet. So I don't see any 66s or 666s. So perhaps this was not some kind of an Illuminati event, coordinated attack or not. So, 1.28 a.m., dark smoke appears coming from the cargo ship as it slams into a concrete bridge column, obliterating it. Officials said at the time of the collision, no traffic was crossing the bridge, but parked vehicles 
apparently belonging to the maintenance crew filling potholes were still on the span. Two maintenance workers survived, one by running from the bridge and the other by going into the water and swimming to shore. What does going into the water mean? Did he jump or was he like where? That, that's not clear. Six other maintenance workers remain unaccounted for. A law enforcement officer makes a desperate radio transmission to dispatch saying the whole bridge just fell down. Start whoever, everybody, the whole bridge just collapsed. I mean, this is really terrifying. Okay, so Moore said the preliminary investigation points toward an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. And would they have? Would they be expected to see it at the beginning stages? And even if they did see it, would they report it? Or would that be considered too alarming? Because another thing, the gullible goof coincidence theorists, the authority worshiping cultists, bootlickers, another thing that they just can't seem to grasp is that even if they did have certain evidence, that doesn't mean they would disclose it. Again, not rocket science. But, you know, coincidence theorists just have a really hard time with this stuff. So, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm trying to find... I saw some information reported that supposedly... Supposedly it was a Ukrainian captain on the ship. It's like a Singapore ship going to Sri Lanka with a Ukrainian captain, supposedly. I don't know if that's verified. Yeah, it looks like... It's not a drawbridge. Looks quite large. Oh, wait. Wait. Baltimore's Key Bridge. Wait, the Key Bridge? Actually, it looks quite large. It looks like it could have passed. Hmm. So apparently it lost power, then issued a mayday, which prevented for any kind of traffic. Yeah, I don't see anything about it being a drawbridge. It, it looks gigantic, so it looked like if it didn't veer into the support, it would have been fine. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, so that's the other thing. So according to Bill Cooper and all the OG conspiracy theorists that predicted all of this in the 60s, 70s, 80s, early 90s, they were saying that once the border, you know, a lot of illegals would be coming in and you know, homegrown terrorism, so to speak, was going to cause many events, you know, mass shootings, just events all over, inciting mass panic, eventually culminating in martial law and the New World Order. So is the, this the beginning of that, or ongoing, depending on how you want to count incidents? I don't know. I mean, it, I guess it could have been an accident. I'm curious to know about the backup power situation. Because, again, we're in 2024, this is not a, you know, ship from hundreds of years ago. You know, this is a, you know, they accounted for these types of situations of a loss of power. Now, supposedly from, from engineers and, and people who, who pilot these ships, that drift upon loss of power does happen. But what about the backup power, though? It's also awfully convenient that the drift was right in the direction of the support column. It's kind of convenient. I mean, why wouldn't it drift not into the support column and not bring the bridge down? So, Snopes is reporting that it is false. Now, obviously, Snopes means nothing. Cause, but apparently, hmm, yeah, they're saying he was Indian. AP News, they're not, let's see, AP News listed, okay, so there is a Ukrainian man who's listed on a maritime jobs database as a captain for the ship, the Dolly. So he is listed on BaltingShipping.com, so... But apparently, this was in 2016. So that information was not just made up from nothing. So there is one, but supposedly it's from 2016. According to AP News, the Dolly's captain and crew are all Indian. The Synergy Marine Group, the company that manages the ship. 
There were two pilots, local specialists, who helped guide vessels safely in and out of ports, navigating Dolly at the time of the collision. Wow, so there's two. Ap apparent Synergy is claiming that they're both U.S. citizens. So there were two of them. So what happened in the backup power? Huh. Yeah, this is weird. Apparently, there's also two other seafarers. And one of them is a Ukrainian man who applied for the role of master or captain. So let's say if, if he was and they wanted to downplay it, then they would have said he was. I mean, I don't know why Goof still believe the MSM, but apparently this information is not from nowhere. So the Dolly, this ship, did have a Ukrainian captain in 2016. Apparently there were one or two other guys who applied for the, for the captain position. It says, I mean, that's all the information here from APnews.com. Hmm. Huh. So, the Dolly has a history of being captained by Ukrainian men. I mean, we could say that. Now, whether or not a Ukrainian man was the captain at this particular time, they're saying no. So, what's also curious is there appear to be multiple Ukrainians vo uh, trying to get positions for captains. Does that mean something on its own as well? Is that usual? I mean, are there usually a lot of Ukrainian cargo ship captains? I mean, I'm not aware of that. Is that just like a popular job for Ukrainians? Like, even before the war? I mean, that's the pertinent information here. Because if, if that's just a job that Ukrainians hap Ukrainian men happen to go into even before the war, then this is not that suspicious. But if it's not, I mean, I don't know. So it apparently... It was carrying 56 containers of hazardous materials. Wow. So it was hazardous cargo. It was not innocuous cargo. So once again, if you're looking at an intentional event, you'd probably pick a ship like that. It was, yes, nearly a thousand feet long, going to Sri Lanka with hazardous material. It's a Singapore-flagged cargo ship, and it was carrying hazardous material. So who knows about the contamination as well? Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. I mean, as more information comes out, is this like a shell company? Like, what is the true purpose of all of that? I mean, it is weird. It is weird. No doubt. And then, of course, I mean, why would they dis? So they disclosed it was hazardous materials. So that's care. I mean, I guess if you don't disclose and you get caught, that's a problem. But if you disclose, you have all the proper licensing. I mean, Singapore isn't Singapore home to the most millionaires? Let me double check that. Wow, this is crazy, huh? This is weird. So. In 2021, there were 44.2 thousand ultra-high net individuals residing in Singapore. So, apparently, Singapore has the second highest percentage of millionaire adults. 7.5% of all Singapore adults are millionaires. Australia supposedly has 8%. That's kind of weird to me. I, I wouldn't have guessed Australia has that many millionaires. Huh. Well, percentage of millionaires. Okay, what about total millionaires? China. Well, they kind of... Oh, well, actually, it's the U.S. U.S. has 24.5 million million millionaires. China has 6.2 million, despite a much higher population. Japan has 3.4 millionaires. Okay, so... Singapore has the highest percentage or second highest percentage. So I don't know. I mean, what really goes on in Singapore? It's not really a country that's uh, really talked about all that much. I mean, who knows? Baltimore, Maryland is the bridge. Not incredibly far from D.C. I mean, regionally, obviously. It's, it's not right next to D.C. Yeah, it was the second largest port on the eastern seaboard. So it was 
primary target for something. I mean, that actually, yeah, it cannot, yeah, for economic damage, I mean, and even if these were, yeah, it's weird, I mean, has anybody seen the movie, the, the Point Break remake? I actually kind of liked it, maybe I'm the only person who liked it, maybe we should make that required viewing for next time. So the Point Break remake, like, they don't hurt people, so they want to do economic damage. Perhaps an organization that wants to do economic damage would target a bridge when there was extremely low traffic or no traffic because they want to take out the port. They don't necessarily want to murder people. Yeah, I mean, if the, yeah, this would definitely cause some economic damage. This is the second largest port on the eastern seaboard. I think I might be the only person that likes the remake more than the original. Maybe. I've never heard anybody else say that. I really enjoyed the remake. A lot. I don't know why. I'm not claiming it's a good movie. I'm just saying I really liked it. And I don't even really know why. That's the other thing. Like, I don't know. It had a cool vibe. I don't know. Hey, Dave Scott. All right. So... Wow, we have some listeners here that were in Maryland recently. Sphinx Bear says, isn't Singapore where they say most of the semiconductor chips come from? Now, that's Taiwan. Taiwan, which also has a lot of millionaires by percentage. Not as much as Singapore, but it's close. So yeah, who knows what's going on in Singapore? I mean, it's kind of a mysterious place. I mean, you don't really hear it talked about as pretty much all the other countries in, in Southeast Asia seem to be more popular than Singapore. I mean, everybody knows Thailand, Vietnam, even, even Cambodia, I mean, for good reasons or not. But yeah, I mean, even Laos. I mean, Singapore just, Malaysia is even, like I've heard Malaysia being mentioned in a lot of places, but not really Singapore. And how many movies even take place in Singapore? Singapore seems to be really under the radar. And if it's got that high percentage of millionaires, I mean, is there something going on in Singapore we don't know about? Oh, wow. Shifty Eyes Shady with the Mothman reference. <laughs> Justin Johnson in here. 33 watching. Illuminati confirmed. Smash the like button. Yeah, part of the reason I think notifications might also be related to the likes, possibly. I don't know. Miranda says there's usually something going on in an area with many millionaires. Yeah. Awesome town, Matt. Did you just get in here? I just did the recap of the timeline. Apparently this ship, a Singapore company ship, the Dolly. Oh, we forgot to go into the etymology. Let's go into the etymology of Dolly. So the <laughs> one <laughs> wow. So the the etymology is quite mixed. You got everything from the goddess of hunting to demon to god. So you have everything from god, hunting and demon. That's foreboding. That's definitely foreboding. Other Arabic translations means shoot, to shoot. I mean, it's all over the place. It's a very generic name with, with a lot of crossover. But yeah, demon is one of them. I mean, that's weird. So yeah, the ship lost power. Then regained it, then lost and regained very quickly again. Which is weird, because what was going on with the backup power, and supposedly it just so happened to veer into a support and took the whole bridge down, but coincidentally there were no cars on the bridge other than maintenance workers. A lot of co coincidences, and this image on the screen is supposedly a satellite image. Just incredible quality. Yeah, the eclipse is supposedly April 8th, and... It suppose I mean this is this is rough because supposedly it's the path of it is quite interesting. I don't want to do too much of a deep dive on it just because there's so much to go into. I mean that's easily, you know, a multi-hour stream. 
but it might cause some people believe that it could be part of this of an entire collapse some people believe that there's just this is the reset there's going to be a lot of unrest not just on the ground but in the sky some people believe that you know project blue beam is going to be unleashed you know there's a lot i mean the disclosure propaganda has been rolling for the past few years you know even government sources talking about uaps they just switched it from ufo to uap kind of how they switch chemtrails to geoengineering you know so yeah it's all it's all pretty weird well supposedly they did issue a mayday so they actually blocked traffic but most of the lanes or at least half the lanes were closed anyway for construction so all right so our let's talk let's it brent abel said no one puts swayze in the corner what what does swayze have to do with anything <laughs> 